Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here with Pastor Felipe. He just got off stage with his message. I hope you're encouraged by this time, by the message. I want to remind you also, if you haven't done so yet, to come and join me as we're going to go through this 30-day plan together for the God I never knew. If you go to echo.church forward slash connect, you'll be able to see it right there. And it says online. We already have several people that are there. I saw Teresa has already been commenting. I uh, can't wait to go through this journey together with you all. So awesome. Felipe, a great message today. As always, I want to start off by asking you, what's something you wish you could have had time to share on stage that you didn't get to? Oh man, uh, well, I'm going to share those things in the next four weeks, okay. <laughs> first of all. But there's a lot, you know, the, this journey is very personal to me. Um, I, I wanted to go a little bit deeper into even a conversation that I had uh, in my freshman year of college with my previous pastor. Yeah. And I went over to him, I shared it in one service today, but I went over to him and I said, hey, how come you never taught me of the Holy Spirit and about spiritual gifts and spiritual empowerment? Because I grew up under his teaching. And he told me of his hurts in the past. And I remember feeling like, man, I feel like you you left out a gift on the table. Like you didn't give me a gift that I was supposed to receive in my journey. And this whole series has been really a lot of his birth out of that. Like hoping and praying that I, like, I don't want to be guilty of that. Like holding back from everything that God wants to offer to people. There's so much more of God than just saying, yes, I'm going to heaven, I'm done. And I wish someone would have told me that earlier in my faith journey. Yeah. And so I hope that this series really awakens that for a lot of people and this understanding. Man, there's so much more that he offers us. It's, it doesn't end with a, a, you know, I'm filled with God, now I'm done. It, it's continual yeah. the journey. It's a friendship, really. Yeah. That I feel like I've, I've, I've experienced that. I feel like we're seeing a lot of that happening in churches today. Yeah. What do you think is, like, leaning into this idea of, like, this aspect of faith having been lost over the years. You did a great job doing like the exposition of what the early church was and how everything blew up and the church grew exponentially and people were getting saved, there was power. All these things were happening and yet now we're finding at a place, ourselves in a place where the church is bigger than it's ever been in history, or maybe not in history, but it's bigger than it's been in a long time. And yet, it seems like a lot of that spirit-empowered power is no longer within the church. Yeah. It's a mystery. You know, I don't fully understand it either. Um, what I do know is that I don't want to, I don't want to miss it. Yeah. You know, like when we look at the last several centuries, every generation since Jesus, uh, and the scripture talks about this little term called the remnant. Like God would preserve for himself a remnant of people that would be about his heart when others would be uh, in religion without power. Yeah. And I, I pray this often, God, I want to be in that circle. Like I don't want to just have a, a form of religion and deny its power like the scripture says. Yeah. But I want to be in that relational, like relation connected to you. So I don't know the answer. I think a lot of it does cycle. You know, like the church will deviate and then a few like the remnant will bring it back. And I do think there's a new awakening happening right now yeah. in the church around the world. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's actually not very big yet. I think yeah. it's like a, a, re, a renewal. Uh, a lot of people walked away from this, the Holy Spirit conversation in the previous generation because they saw it done really bad. Mm. And I think there's now, now a, a rise of, of, of a people that's like, I don't want to just do life on my own power. I do yeah. want the Holy Spirit. But I don't know what it'll look like in the future. I think there's an aspect of it also in, at least in the Western American church, uh, you can say things have been pretty comfortable for yes. the last few hundred yes. years. Yeah, yeah. And so you could apply your faith by your own abilities and by your own talents and your own power, essentially. There wasn't that opposition in our world in the sense that really required you to be fully, fully dependent on God. Dude, you're absolutely right. And that's kind of scary, to yeah. be honest, because our our comfort is connected to a complacency with the Spirit of God. Yeah. When you when you ha need the Spirit to live, you call on Him with desperation, yeah. different than when you're super comfortable. And the church has been its strongest around the world when it's persecuted, when people are, when it's hard to be a Christian. Yeah. It is going to become more and more like that, in my opinion. I think like my kids growing up, they're teens now, 
they're gonna have a way harder time being Christians than I had even growing up, I believe. And I can see it already. The the opposition, the anti-biblical values, the the amount of people that don't tolerate those that believe in the Bible has grown so much where in my generation, if you're like, ah, I'll ignore you, now they attack you. Yeah. So it, 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 I think it requires more of God because of it. That's interesting then that there's in parallel happening, there is more opposition to biblical values in our culture. And you're, like you're saying, there's a resurgence within churches right now, this bigger dependence on the sphere Absolutely. of God. Absolutely. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. Mm. It's mysterious. You talked about uh, deposits that people can make. Like there's yeah. this compounding interest that you can make as you want to see God. And I know all of you guys joining us, we want to experience this spirit empowered life. What are some of these deposits that we, I know we're going to be talking about that through the series, but what are some of these deposits yeah. that people yeah. can make? Honestly, it's very similar to how you'd view a marriage. Like I, I saw my grandparents and my parents, their marriage got better throughout the years because they made deposits in the right direction. Yeah. What you don't work on does not get better, it gets worse. Yeah. So for you to work on any relationship, you need to have deposits of intimacy with that person. And it's the same with God. So the way I've been married now 20 years next year, and my marriage now is better than it was 20 years ago because we built rhythms yeah. of uh, getting to know each other. So we have daily times together around the table at dinner. We have weekly date nights we go on for 20 years. We do quarterly getaways. We intentionally grow as a couple. In our relationship with God, it's the same. You don't grow toward God by accident. You have to create rhythm. So yeah. it's the rhythm of like, I'm going to wake up a little bit earlier tomorrow and read the scriptures and I'm going to seek God and I'm going to go on a walk and I'm going to call him into my life and I'm, I'm going to relate with hu other humans in faith and ask him to help me get better in my faith journey. All of those things are like little deposits yeah. that over time will make you a person closer to God, more full of love, with better character, but it has to be intentional. Yeah. I'll give you all two ways you can do that really intentionally that Pastor Philippe mentioned his message also. One is just come to the services for this series. We have four more weeks of it. We're going to be unpacking a lot more of these things together. Uh, so make sure you show up. Join at one of our three local campuses or online and take it all in. Take notes, follow along. And the second thing is join in with the, uh, the devotional plan that we're all doing together. On your digital program, again, at echo.church forward slash connect. You'll see there's a plan you can select there based on your campus or joining online with me and our team. We'd love for you to be a part of that. And that's a simple way by just a few minutes every day that you can create these deposits that we truly believe over time compounding great interest in your life and what the Spirit of God wants to do. Can I Amen. give one more? Yeah. Only for church online. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so those of you that want to go a little bit deeper than even those two things, um, I did this this past week. I want to encourage you to read through the book of Acts and underline or highlight every time the Holy Spirit is mentioned. So go through it. You will be amazed at how it will give you a glimpse into the relationship that the early followers of Jesus had with the Holy Spirit. It's very eye opening and you're going to find your, your book in the book of Acts fully highlighted from beginning to end with the words Holy Spirit on them. It will give you a greater understanding of that. All right. Awesome. Well, can't wait to continue with this series. And for next su next Sunday, next Sunday is a big Sunday. I hope you'll be here with us, Pastor Felipe. I know I you're Brazilian and you're a citizen and it's part of your duty to watch the World Cup. And it kicks off next Sunday. But I think this is, is Brazil more Brazil playing Sunday? No, they're not playing Sunday. Okay, that's so good you're off to the know. hook. Yeah. Ecuador versus Qatar. Okay. That is the kickoff. So we'll see you all next week for part two of uh, The God I Never Knew. Have a great rest of your Sunday. We'll see you next time. See you guys.